Welcome to Books and Things. Today we've traveled all over the world to find <laughs> olive oil producers. And this is from the Capizano oil, sto oil uh, store in uh, Park 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 And how, how long have you been there? Yeah. We're going on our fifth year. Really? Wow, I was going to show you how much I go. I live in Park Tech. Yes. <laughs> yes. But Capizano's is on Cogswell Street in Street yes. in Park Tech. And they uh, host, I don't know how many different kinds of olive oils. And you have vinegars. And uh, let me introduce Stephen and Suzanne yes. Capizano. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tom. And I really appreciate you being here because I, I, I know nothing about it. Oil. You know, a couple of things I mentioned to you in the store about I do know two oils that are not right, but I think there's so much to learn. Yes. And people, you talk about, oh, I get some oil, olive oil today. They don't yes. know what kind. Yes. So, what can you tell us about oil? Well, uh, if I may start, I, I think one of the first things is, uh, you, know, you know, how we got into the, the business. Uh -huh. um, a number of years ago, uh, I read a study by the University of California at Davis that said that 69% of the international uh, olive oil that was labeled extra virgin in the supermarkets was fraudulent. Ah. Okay, so 69%. Wow. And then um, about a year, year and a half ago, um, 60 Minutes reaffirmed that. I don't know if uh, anyone saw that program, if you saw the program. I did. Yes. But they actually reaffirmed it. And it has actually not, get, not gotten any better. No. Uh, and, and, so, uh, and then I read, um, uh, being books and things, this book top by Tom Mueller, uh, Extra Virginity. And I talked about the olive oil industry and the history of olive oil. And one of the things that came out from that was that uh, the fraudulence in the olive oil industry has been going on for thousands of years. So it's nothing new. Yeah. But we, uh, we looked at that as an opportunity uh, for us. Yes. Anything for well, I think that most of the olive oils that you see in stores, you don't really know what they are. It's right. pretty bottles, or expensive. Right. and. Right. So you buy an expensive one with a pretty bottle and you've got right. garbage. <laughs> right. But I think you just hit something on the head. The marketing of olive oil. You know, yeah. you see this pastoral scene with this person in an olive grove. Yeah. And that's what they wanted you to, to see. It wasn't so much that the olive oil in it was good. Yeah. But, you know, you, you looked at it from that standpoint. And the, one of the uh, wonderful things with our store is you can actually experience the nose notes and the flavor notes of each olive oil. So in the education of all of our co customers is um, for them to learn what is extra virgin olive oil. Because you can't taste the oils in the supermarket. They're all in the bottles. Right. And, you know, as this chart in back of us is, sh is showing... This is a study that UC Davis did, and they took um, random um, oils off of a random uh, grocery market shelves in California, and they tested it with an independent laboratory, and that's where the 69% um, of the olive oils were fraudulent. They were old. Uh, that is unfortunate because you go out and buy oil. I know nothing about it. I want to make French fries. What do I do? <laughs> Yeah. And I think I think we're missing a boat without proper uh, markings on the jar. This is good for such and such and such. But if they're not going to tell you if it's good to, uh, good oil or not, they're not going to put any labels on it either. Well, that, there's another uh, thing that Suzanne and I have both suggested was that um, we have uh, the chemical analysis that goes with each olive oil, each extra virgin olive oil, so that you can see the quality of it. And we've often joked that when they put that on bottles of olive oil at the supermarket, our job will be done, you know, in a sense, and we'll go on and do something else. But, uh, you know, 
for, for instance, one of the things that is beginning to happen in the industry because of this, uh, the problems that have been going on, is that they're starting to put the crush date on the, the oil, okay? Mm -hmm. Meaning that it was crushed in um, October 2017. Or if you're down in the Southern Hemisphere, it might be May of 2018. So with what they used to do was that they would put um, Best Buy, meaning yeah. you can, they would say you can use this by 2019, you know, that. But you didn't know when it was crushed. You know, it could have uh. been crushed a year ago, two years ago, sometimes three years ago. And the economic market really dictates a lot of how when they bring it to when they bring it to market so you don't know that but now knowing the crush date you know how old it is which is really the most mm. important thing for an olive oil yeah, yeah. and uh, with the bottles on the shelf you notice that all of our bottles are dark um, yes. so um, we uh, when a customer wants a certain extra virgin olive oil we bottle it from the Fusti. And uh, Fusti is um, in Italian. And yes, Fusti. it's a um, small one, right? a yeah. small one. But the, those, uh, they're from Italy. And oh. there, it really means vat. Vat. Uh, but we're bottling um, in dark bottles so that it eliminates while, the light. While we're on the subject of the bottles, Frank, can you show those pictures? Next. All right, this is the checkout counter. Yes. And it's a couple of Fusti's, Fustus? Yeah, Fusti, because there's Fusti, more than one. Because there's more than one on the counter. And that's, uh, you, you pick up your, your bottle, and actually, nobody touches that bottle until you give it to them. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay, next one. All right, now there's all, all those bottles on the bottom two shelves are empty. Correct. And you pour the uh, olive oil from the vats on the top. Yes, the olive oil, or uh, we have aged balsamic vinegar. So the customer says which um, size they would like, and then we uh, bottle that for them from the uh, Fusta. And Fusta. you said you'd never let anybody touch those. No, we don't want anyone touching those spigots. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, sanitary reasons. Sanitary. Yeah, it's yeah. a good idea. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, you never know where their hands have been. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So we're very careful with that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And then this next picture is Suzanne pouring a bottle. Yeah. Or filling a bottle. Right. Yes. And we we have to be very mindful while we're filling. <laughs> yeah, they stuff yeah. all over the floor. <laughs> but those are those are the extra virgin olive oil tanks and um, the green. Uh, tags on the front of them that actually talk about that olive, that extra virgin olive oil. So it tells you when we crushed it, when it was crushed. It, um, and all of our extra virgin olive oils, all of the groves have to submit their crush to an independent laboratory. So the, the groves themselves cannot test um, those oils. Yeah. It's an um, independent laboratory that does it and they test the phenol levels, which is your anti-inflammatory benefits, oleic acids, um, peroxide value, and uh, a number of other things. But they're all the science of what extra virgin olive oil is all mm -hmm. about. In the old days, in the old days, it was by the senses that it, uh, you uh, decided on the quality. And they had people who you could smell or taste uh, any defects that were involved mm. with, with, the, with the olives and the olive oil. Um, nowadays, it's so popular now, olive oil and, and things, that they don't really have enough of these experts to really work with that so much. But that's not the only reason. But the chemistry is also very helpful yeah. uh, with, with the quality of an oil. Yes. So it's just not oil, olive oil in a bottle anymore. Well, you know, that's a, that's a great observation because it's not just an olive oil. And, yeah. and it, 
can still be just an olive oil if that's what you want. But if you're looking for uh, a great olive oil, if you're looking to buy uh, what you're paying for, you know, that's the other thing. Yeah. You know, if you're really looking to buy uh, what you're paying for, then uh, these things are extremely important. Mm. And, All right. Correct. And there's a lot, um, a lot of uh, news and research and documented research now that uh, what is healthy about extra virgin olive oil. So there is um, research studies from Rutgers University and the Olive uh, UC Davis Olive Center that are really um, fine-tuning those studies that the oleanthal of the olive is actually killing certain cancer cells. So that yeah. it's a it's a wonderful time to be in um, the mm. the movement of food as mm. as medicine. Um, with the extra virgin olive oils. Yeah. And, and that goes back to your point about it's not just olive oil anymore because for the health benefits of things, it's the quality of the olive oil, okay? Those, those phenol levels um, on a lot of bottles in the supermarkets are relatively low. Uh, mm. uh, the, the better oils have higher phenol levels, which are those anti-inflammatories which are the health benefits of, one of the health benefits of, of an olive oil. Now, I, I'm assuming that most of this oil is for cooking. That's a great statement because our <laughs> extra virgin olive oils, are, all of our olive oils are tested. Um, so the smoke point is 410 degrees. Uh, so you can cook with uh, extra virgin olive oils. One of the key things that we teach our, our customers is with the phenol levels being so high, ours are very high in the four, 600 range, um, those phenols are what protects the oil under heat. Oh, okay. So if you have a low phenolic count yeah. in your olive oil, yeah, you don't want to cook with that. that. That's really not recommended. If it's a high phenol count, then absolutely it's um, safe to cook with. Uh, the lower phenols, are, they break down quicker. Mm -hmm. So you would want to just use those on um, All right. I salad. live alone. I throw a steak in every once in a while or a hamburger or whatever. And I want to put oil in. What would I use? You could use um, the extra virgin olive oil. You could use garlic olive oil. Ooh. If you use, or olive wood smoked that we have. Olive wood smoked, <laughs> yes. an olive wood smoked olive oil. Or we have a Tuscan herb. So when you're saying those, that those flavors will uh, shine on your, your meat. Mm. Yeah. Ah. And I also do French fries. Mm. And mm. Uh, I throw it. I think, throw it I think the, the, what we're trying to say is the key is if you're going to use olive oil, you, wanna, you don't want the olive oil to break down under heat because right. that's really an unhealthy situation. Yeah. We, we ne really never thought about that. You know, have, have an olive oil for you know, 55 years, 60 years now. Um, back in the old days, we didn't think in this respect as far as health-wise and mm. conscious-wise. But um, if you're going to be doing that, you want to get a quality oil that does not break down under under heat. Now, what about the grinders? Mm. Again, mm. What? well, you know, can it? May I just yeah. because oh, yes. uh, yeah. uh, something that was pointed out in, in in this book, but I have I know anyway is that different oils will bring different uh, uh, flavors yeah. to anything. Yeah, and you, uh, if it's bad, you throw it. In. <laughs> and if well. Yeah. But you know, um, UC Davis did, a, a, did a, another study uh, that I was reading that uh, they gave a great extra virgin olive oil uh, to, to people, and then they gave a rancid oil. And uh, close to 50% of the people liked the rancid oil better than the great mm -hmm. oil. Do you know why? Any idea why that, that might happen? Because that's really all they knew. They've been... Oh. Oh. They've been yeah. Eating or yeah. putting rancid oil all their lives. So they thought that was supposed to be what olive oil wow. tasted like. Yes. Plus, that's not good. 
Oh, I think I have a couple more pictures here. The, uh, or this one is a display. Yes, so those are our olives. We have, um, I'm going to say, amazing, exquisite, exceptional olives from Spain. We have a manzanilla olive, and we have a, a queen olive. It's a gordel. So uh, the things about our olives is that they're not brined with any um, added chemicals or okay. synthetics yeah. things. It's brined naturally, and it's lower in sodium than uh, most olives are. So a lot of our customers, we give them samples to taste because when you, you see an olive in a jar and you think, okay, it's just an olive, but yeah. once they taste that uh, clean, crisp flavor, they really like them. I gotta stop back again. I got more time. Mm. But those are excellent pictures. And this is, is that more, uh, is that vinegar or is this more? No, more of the same. Those are the oils. Yeah. Now, how many different oils do you have? Well, it, it changes oh. season to season. Okay. Okay. Um, right now, let's see. I we, would say, go ahead. We normally have five different. Extra virgin, extra virgin olive oils olive from oils. different parts of the, um, like those are all northern hemisphere extra virgin olive oils. So there's two from Spain, and then there was three from Italy. One was from Puglia, and then the other two were from Sicily. How do you keep track of all those? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a Obviously fun. Obviously, you know your business. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and it's also working with great people. Yeah, yeah see, that's, that, and, uh, in this day and age, it's not just you doing everything. It's the people that you work with. And we yeah. work with uh, a, a great, some great people, one of them being the Bradley family out in California, uh, mm -hmm. who has been you know, mentors to us and helpful, very much so. Um, and what Suzanne was saying was that what, what we have now is the Northern Hemisphere oils, meaning the Mediterranean region. And that is, um, they crush in October, November, December, and into December sometimes. Uh, and that's the way that we re always remembered olive oil back in the old days. Yeah. Nowadays, just like wine, uh, olive oil is going down to the southern hemisphere. It's, uh, you know, where we'll get it from South Africa, Uruguay, um, Chile, Australia. And they crush in May, June, around that, that time. So they really have just finished their crush. And in about uh, a month or so, we will be getting those olive oils. Now, when you say crush, is that crushing the olives? Or? Yes, yes, crushing the olives, right. We, right. we also, because of the Bradley family, we uh, have ongoing educational um, summits with them. And we were able to be at a grove in Woodland California. So we were able to see them being picked and mm. then went to the mill. So all of our uh, olive oils, all of the groves have to crush uh, within four hours. Really? They, they can't hold the olives because once an olive leaves the tree, it starts to break down. Wow. So we got to see the milling process and the washing of the olives and then the crushing. So it's not the... Um, older way that where you have the stone that's going around and it's crushing the olive. These are called malaxers. They're steel blades so they crush the olive and the pit until it becomes a paste. And then the oil actually rises from the paste and then it's going through a centrifuge. So they're spinning the oil out without any added heat because that's what you really want to um, avoid. Mm -hmm. And we get to um, taste that first juice from the crushed olive. How many olives does it take to make a, make a bottle of olive oil? To, from the picking yeah. to through? Well, you figure that once they pick, within four hours, they have to be at the mill being, being crushed. Yeah. And it takes, you know, a, not too long after that, in a sense. I can't tell you exactly that timing. But, uh, you know, as Suzanne was saying, you know, you, you see it, you know, they have these hammers now that will crush it. And then it goes down a conveyor belt, you know, down to the, yeah. you know, the malaxers and the centrifuge. And then it comes out just like a fountain where you put your glass in and you taste it, right? That's 
huh. the way to taste olive oil. So so how many, because uh, we're not close to the groves, yeah. we can't do that quite as readily. Yeah. yeah. But how many olives does it take to fill a jar? Uh, how many well, are we talking? Hundreds? Or? Oh, geez. I, I, I don't know exactly. Okay. I can't tell you. Yeah. Right. That's, that's yeah. take a lot, though. Uh, it, tiny olives, so. <laughs> it does, but you know, the, the thing about it is, is that you, you have uh, your olive, which gives that oil, but if you pick it earlier in the season, yeah. it doesn't give as much oil, but it's uh -huh. more intense. It's more, uh -huh. uh, the polyphenol, the phenols are probably higher. Uh -huh. If you let it ripen, more it, it it gives more oil uh, when it's not ripe it gives less oil when it's riper it gives more oil mm. but the phenol level begins to come down so you have to play with that in the industry meaning do i want a lot of oil where the phenol levels are less do i want a little oil where the phenol levels are higher uh, yeah uh, that's one of the yeah. things with our um uh, the Bradley family, they really focus in on the healthy parts of the extra virgin olive oil. So uh, a lot of ours that we bring into the store are high in phenols. Um, because of our, our background, my um, background is in health care, uh, really about cardiac health and all of those You're things. You were both in health care, weren't you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. But one of the other interesting little pieces, a lot of people ask, well, how do the phenols get into the, the olives for us to consume? And when you're looking at the trees, the olive trees, so the environment, just like with wine, the terroir of, of wines, the environment is really what helps those pieces along. So if you're, the trees are in a dry environment and mm -hmm. it's, a, just, you know, it's a distress, it's stress to that tree. So in order for that tree to survive, it actually produces the phenols. So the phenols go into the olives that then benefit us. Wow. Mm. Huh. Not just like cooking oil. Was <laughs> uh, yeah. that, that, yeah, exactly. We all, yeah. we all did at one time. Yeah, we always we built up did. in a Portuguese house and we all did. oil and make french fries or whatever. You'll, have to, or, you'll have to come in. We yeah. don't... We're going to the Southern Hemisphere now, but next year we have this luscious Coburn Cosa from, uh, from Portugal that, huh. we, that we bring in. If you are Portuguese, that you might like very, yeah. very I much. I love the dryer. Yeah, because yeah, I'm not a great cook. I do cook. And, uh, but I'm, I buy the oil that looks like it's going to be a nice one, and I don't know if it is or not. <laughs> mm. Well, that's one of the, the, you know, coming into the store, you'll get that education, yeah. you know, to smell it and taste it. So the, the difference between um, refined olive oils that a lot of um, companies have, um, ours have a very, it's a green, grassy, herbaceous uh, nose note. So that, as our customers say, that what has an alive smell to it. Yeah. So refined olive oils have really no smell. It's a very heavy, as some customers say, it's a heavy, oily um, smell or taste. We have five minutes left. Do oh, we... you want to talk about the yes. uh, props that you got here? Yes. Well, these are, these are tasting glasses, and they are, as you can see, blue. Uh. And they're blue for uh, a specific reason. Actually, the shape is specific uh, to the tasting. Um, the color, I, I always go back to the history of it. We always think the greener an olive oil, olive oil the better it is. That's, that's, that's a myth, that's not true. Huh. Although I still lend myself to more green olive, <laughs> olive oil, but it's not true. Um, the, uh, the blueness of this glass hides the color, so you're not biased to the color. And you're just working from the quality of the oil. That's it. The, you know, it, it gives you a little bit of, it has a flat bottom because they, they heat it. Um, 82 degrees, I believe, is the temperature that, for each of the oils when they're tasting huh. and testing. Um, because that's when it begins to really pop with yeah. the, the smell and the, and the taste. Uh, and the shape, just easy to hold on to. Yeah. 
But the, the key, I think, here is really the, the color, that it's blue because you, know, you don't want to be biased to yeah. what the color is. And that's and where those come from UC Davis Olive Center. Yeah. Oh, really? And that's yeah. where we get our education from there, where ah, we did yeah. it. And I noticed that in your store you have little paper cups all around there so people can try it. They can try it. Right? I don't think I've ever tried tasting olive oil. Well, that's because you haven't tasted a good or a great <laughs> olive oil. Well, right. when, when, they don't when, do that in the stores. Yes, right? yes, because of that. But I want to just, uh, for me, ending by saying we had a culinary class come in from a local high school and spent about an hour with the education of it. And at the end of it, we gave them a, a little taste test. I gave them uh, four olive oils. Three of them were extra virgin, fine quality olive oils, and we gave them a rancid oil. Uh, they were, and each one of them, after that education, was able to pick up that rancid oil like that. Really? They knew it. They knew it. Huh. They actually knew it as much by the smell before they even drank it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Easy, quick, learn. Yeah. Now, What's, I, is virgin oil fairly new? Uh, virgin oil is... Uh, uh, what do we call it? Uh, extra virgin olive yeah. oil fairly new? I, no. It doesn't no. seem as though I've, as a kid I've ever run across it. No. It's, it's, do you want to answer that? Or well, the, the term extra virgin is, it means zero defects in the olive oil. Oh, okay. And, right. In, in the free fatty acids of an extra virgin olive oil are in chemistry, in the chemical analysis of it, is a 0.8 or less. If it's over a 0.8, it now becomes a virgin olive oil. Ah. Okay, so there's qualities to the, to the oils yeah. that go along with it. I've got a, got a couple of minutes in. Uh, I really appreciate you guys being on. And I've learned a lot. I hope everybody else has. Uh, I've if you enjoyed the show and learned something about cooking oils, say thank you to Stephen and Suzanne, and go visit them on uh, Cogswell Avenue. Cogswell Street. Street. Yeah. The magical street called the Cogswell. VFW <laughs> <laughs> used to be on that street. Yeah. And uh, stop in and see them, and you'd be uh, impressed by just the number of oils that they have on the wall in there. Uh, Santa Claus is coming next week. I know it's kind of early, but he's, his vacation is, is over. And he's on his way back to the North Pole, and he called me up and decided he wanted to come in and say hello before he goes to work. I don't think he's ever worked, to tell you the truth. Anyway, uh, if you're out and about on Saturday, Park Tech VFW is having a yard sale from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., and they're also hosting a double boil lobster dinner at the hall on... on uh, the 28th, mm. and it's 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Lobsters, corn on the cob, baked potato, and it's only uh, $30 for the donation for the two. In August, I've got Connie Bambachi, I think her name is, telling us about her deaf dog and how she and her husband taught the dogs over 70 uh, ASL, American Sign Language, and the dog pretty much answers her and knows exactly what she's talking about. And she's a, she's a service dog and very intelligent. Deaf dogs used to be shot. I didn't know that mm -hmm. because they figured they're useless. They can't mm -hmm. do a thing. Mm -hmm. They're not. Jim Bennett's coming back with a book on William Gillette. And uh, Frank and Justin Lamprey's coming back for uh, returning from Nashville. He'll be in uh, the end of August. And uh, Frank is, Frankie's been on the show since he was 14 years old. He just turned 19. Great kid. Uh, watch the past shows on uh, YouTube, go to sec.org, press the button, and pick the shows you want to watch. Thank you for watching. You should be reading. Cuddle up with a good book. Be kind, smile, and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.